the next experiment that we are having is faced locked loop a face lock loop is a circuit which is used to lock the frequency of a of a voltage controlled oscillator with that of the input signal let's look at the circuit to first understand it the basic block diagram is as shown here as you can see in this circuit basically we are having a phase detector which is trying to compare between an input signal which is having a frequency of Fn and an output signal which is having a frequency of FVCO some frequency in which the VCO is operating currently the Fn frequency is the frequency which is given at the input and based on which we want the FVCO to lock that means the loop should operate in such a way that the FVCO value becomes equal to the F in value F in value is the value that will come at the input which is different for different applications what happens is if the Fn and FVCO are initially not equal then the phase detector output gives a signal which contains you know which may be a signal which looks like something like this out of which a low pass filter basically gets a DC signal out the DC signal may have any DC value and that DC value may be amplified may not be amplified but here we are keeping an amplifier that amplified value will be given to the VCO and since VCO means voltage controlled oscillator whose output frequency VCO depends on the voltage value that is coming here so a DC signal that is coming all the way from here will change the FVCO and this this feedback will keep on happening until Fn equals FVCO until that happens the loop will keep on giving a feedback of voltage signal once the Fn F FVCO are same the output signal DC signal will be a very low value which will not change the frequency of the VCO because of which we can say that the FVCO and Fn will remain same now if Fn is again changed a little bit then if Fn is again changed a little bit then the DC value that comes here will automatically try to see that FVCO always tries to match up with F in so there are two states for this particular loop one is an unlock state and the second one is a locked state in the unlock state the F in and FVCO will not be equal whereas in the lock state the Fn and the FVCO will be equal 
or we will say that FVCO follows FN that means if FN's value change FVCO value also change this concept can be better understood by looking at the frequency spectrum as drawn here the VCO is initially operating at a free running frequency F0 so F0 here is F0 is basically a free running frequency so when the VCO is running at a free running frequency and the Fn value is nowhere close to F0 suppose if it is here then if here is what is the fn frequency then the loop is not locked that is fn and fvco are not equal as you keep on increasing the value of fn that means as you keep on increasing the value of the input frequency you will see that the input frequency keeps on increasing until it reaches this particular frequency the fn will not be equal to fvco or f0 what we are having here now fn will not be equal to f0 and the loop is still unlocked but as soon as it reaches this frequency what happen is fco will become equal to uh, the frequency of the VCO will become equal to Fn and and inside it as the f uh, frequency of the input signal keeps on changing further increasing it will remain locked the loop will remain locked up till when up till you reach a certain frequency that is this so once fn has started from here it was not locked once it reached this frequency the loop became locked so here the loop is locked here the loop is locked at this frequency it is locked at these frequencies all it is locked 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 lock. here also it is locked but as soon as it reaches this frequency suddenly the f4 does not become equal to fn and the VCO's output frequency is the the frequency that we see here and the input at that point may be at say this frequency hmm? Fn may be at this frequency and as you can see here Fn F0 will not match and what you will have is that the VCO output will not be the VCO output will not be matching the fn and thus we will say that the loop is again unlocked if we try to again bring the fn frequency back it will not lock on the loop will not lock on until the fn frequency reaches this value once it reaches this value the loop will remain locked for this much range outside that it will not be locked so there are two types of ranges in the case of a PLL one is called as the capture range within which if FN comes within which if FN comes the loop becomes locked and it remains locked once it has you know in uh, once it has become locked by coming inside the capture range it will remain locked throughout the whole rock range to understand this concept I would like to uh, you know take this part here you see that I have got two outputs in the DSO output one is the VCO output and the second is the input signal that you are given this is the F in this is the F in that I am talking about and this is the F VCO which is actually currently at the free running frequency F0 this green signal that you see here that represents F in 
so as you can see here itself that the fn frequency is low as compared to the fvco because obviously fvco is the current free running frequency f not if i increase this frequency towards a higher you know if i increase this frequency input frequency what will i see i will see i will see that this particular frequency increases see it has increased here the presently fn is here but still the vco output signal is not locked to the input why i am saying that it is not locked because as you can see here the frequency of this signal and the frequency of this signal they are not same and why it has not locked because the fn signal that we are having this one the fn signal has still not entered the capture range it will lock only when it is inside the capture range so next if i bring the fn inside the capture range just inside the capture range i can see that the input frequency and the vco frequency both are now matching previously when it was outside the vco frequency was some higher frequency it did not match and it was not locked but once it reached inside the capture range the input frequency and the vco output frequency they are both matching and you can see that the vco output frequency is not the f not that we are having here hmm? the vco output is not f not but instead the vco is equal to the input that is given by this particular line the green line now since the pll has locked on to this frequency whatever be the reason as we go on increasing the frequency it will still remain locked see i have increased the frequency of the input the vco is again locked and this will go on at higher frequencies it will keep on going it will keep on going at higher frequencies so here also see the input and the vco output both are locked but once the input frequency crosses this particular range that means this particular frequency when the input frequency crosses that the input frequency and the vco is not same that means the loop is now not locked and the vco output will be fo that means here the frequency will be basically f not and here it will be f in where f in will be this frequency so it got locked here and it got unlocked at this particular frequency isn't it now when again i am after reaching from after starting all the way i started from this particular frequency and i went all the way up to here isn't it to a high frequency so after this particular frequency that is you know this particular one the unlocking has happened to the loop and now the system is or the loop is unlocked now once again when i try to bring back this frequency inside this range it will not lock as you can see here the input and the vco both are are they same no they are not same why it has not same because the loop is not locked and why is it not locked because the input frequency is not within the capture range so once it enters inside the capture range as you can see here the input and the vco output both of them i have matched why because they have locked the loop has locked itself and now the input and the vco the vco basically will track the input it will keep on tracking the input until where until this particular frequency range so let me be clear this time also that it started it locked on when it came here and it is keeping on locked until this particular frequency outside of that again it becomes unlocked as you can see here the input and the vco 
are not matched just previous to that what was the case just previous to that input and vcu both were locked but as soon as it jumped this side you can see that the input and the vco is not matched and the vco output that you are having here it is having a frequency that is the free running frequency f not an input frequency some other frequency and now the loop is not locked so as as it has been shown here you can understand from this diagram very neatly that there are there is a range which is called as a capture range within which if fn comes then only the loop becomes locked so once fn comes within this capture range this is important to understand once fn comes inside the capture range the loop is locked and once if it is locked it can remain locked for the whole lock range clear that means if fn value <coughs> comes within the capture range the loop is locked and if it is locked it can remain locked for all these frequencies all these frequencies it can remain locked that's why we have two two ranges one is called as the capture range and the second one is the lock range and that you know you can understand the definition of it by let's go back <coughs> we can say that you can write this down if vco is equal to fn that means if these two frequencies have become equal then we can say that the loop this loop is locked okay this loop is locked and that will happen only if fn comes close to f not how close it is within the capture range so if fn frequency is bought within the capture range then the loop is locked and once it is locked it will remain locked throughout the lock range so that is what we explained here there is a capture range and there is a lock range when we want to design a pll we want to design a pll so that it can have a desired capture range and it can have a desired lock range once again i want you to have a look here the explanation of this block diagram is that when fn and f vco are not same the phase detector will give an output which will have a dc signal and that dc signal voltage will change this oscillator output that is fco until it matches both of fn and fco matches match with each other such that the dc signal becomes low and once that matching has happened the loop is said to be locked for that we use an ic 566 uh, 565 i see and the internal diagram of that you can see here it is shown here as you can very clearly see there is a phase detector there is a vco there is an amplifier the only thing is that we need to have a we need to have a, a filter connected to this particular well the vco will operate for a particular value of r and c which we have seen uh, which we can see here that pin number 8 is connected to a resistance r1 and pin number 9 is connected to a timing risk capacitance c1 and r1 c1 are having a voltage of plus vcc and minus vcc apart so the current will flow from v plus vcc through r1 through c1 up to minus vcc and that will create a frequency of the vco which will be the free running frequency so this r1 and c1 will create a free running frequency and this is the input signal 
with which we want to match the VCO as you can see here the VCO as you can see here the VCO is having an output which is coming at pin number 4 and that we have to compare it with the input and that has been internally done if you you know if you connect this pin number 4 and 5 as we have done here that 5 goes all the way up to the phase detector so now this VCO output and you know the VCO output is connected to the phase detector and the phase detector gives an output which goes to the amplifier the amplifier is connected to a filter via pin number 7 as you can see here pin number 7 is connected to pin number 10 by the help of a capacitance there is an internal resistance here of a value of 3.6 K and that internal resistance and this capacitance together will form a filter and that filter will give an output signal you know which is DC and that DC goes to the VCO and it changes the frequency of the VCO which is again going to the phase detector and that loop keeps on working so when we say that we decide we want to design the v the PLL we are interested to find out the value of R1 and C1 and the value of C2 let me again say R1 and C1 will decide the free running frequency F0 and the C2 will be basically the low pass filter component will be the low pass filter component with this 3.6 K so what are the equations for it the free running frequency F0 can be calculated by this particular equation R1 C1 value is given by these components and we have to be careful that R1 should be between 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz the value of C1 can be anything and the log range is defined by this equation where F0 is the free running frequency that we have already talked about and the capture range and the capture range is given by this frequency where the value of R2 I said there is an internal resistance 3.6 kilo ohm that internal resistance R2 with the C2 will define what is the capture range and that's how you have to design thank you the next experiment is FM demodulation which we are going to do with the help of a phase locked loop FM demodulation using phase locked loop we have already studied what's a phase lock loop a phase lock loop basically consists of a closed loop whose main job is to track the input frequency that is coming that means the VCO which is the voltage controlled oscillator it has a free running frequency which is F0 that free running frequency that free, free running frequency F0 is something that we have designed for this particular VCO the main role of the v, uh, PLL is that if there is some frequency coming which is Fn and if that Fn falls within the capture range then the PLL will try to lock on to that particular frequency that means the VCO that is a voltage controlled oscillator that will try to track this Fn and give 
the output of the VCO that is F VCO to be equal to Fn. So if the Fn comes inside the capture range then the VCO will be equal to will give a frequency that is equal to Fn itself. That's how we say that the VCO tracks the frequency that is coming at the input. And we all know how it does this is by comparing using a phase detector the difference <coughs> the difference of the input and the VC output and generating an error signal and that error signal amplified after passing through a low pass filter amplified and is given to the voltage controlled oscillator and this voltage this error voltage this error voltage changes the VCO output frequency until it reaches a frequency because of which the error becomes equal to zero so a PLL always wants to keep its error equal to zero that means the E voltage it always wants to keep it to zero so that the VCO output becomes equal to the input frequency Fn and remember that will happen only if the Fn comes within the capture range and then it will follow it throughout the log range in the case of FM what we have to first do is we are having a VC output as you can see here it is a particular frequency and there is an input uh, frequency that we are giving which is something else first we have to make the loop locked so what we will do is we will try to give the input frequency equal to the F0 that is the design frequency of VCO in our case we are designing the F0 in our case we are designing the F0 to be equal to 10 kilohertz so the VCO is having a free running frequency of 10 kilohertz and in the first stage what we will try to do is that we will try to bring Fn equal to the F0 so the situation will look something like this the situation will look something like this once that has happened then whatever change we do in the input the VCO will track that isn't it that's what a PLL a PLL in a PLL the VCO basically tries to track in the FN now once this has locked the loop has locked then we will try to change the signal that is Fn by instead of giving Fn we will try to give an Fm that means F in right now is this frequency instead of giving this frequency here we will try to give an Fm signal we will try to give a frequency modulated signal once we give the frequency modulated signal obviously the frequency will keep on changing isn't it? how will that look like see here here as we can see the input frequency it's not constant it is changing and it should change isn't it it should change why it should change because that's what is FM in FM modulation the carrier which is of constant frequency let's say in our case F0 that has been changed according to message signal so you can see that if I'm going to draw the message signal the message signal will come something like this here the frequency has increased and here it has decreased and again the frequency has increased and again it is going on decreasing so obviously with respect to this input signal you have generated a FM signal 
which we can do in the case of uh, using a function generator anyway this input signal will generate this FM signal and this FM signal is what you are going to give into the phase detector okay into the phase detector so this FM signal is going to be given to the phase detector and you will try to see if the VCU has locked by looking at the output that is the VCU output and if it has locked you will see that the VCO output will follow exactly the FN input uh, the FM so after the PLL has locked you give an FM signal the FM signal comparing with the FCO signal will generate an error voltage and that error voltage basically again changes the VCO isn't it and what will be that error voltage that error voltage will be the difference between the FM signal and the free running frequency F0 which is actually 10 kilohertz FM signal which has changing frequency as we can see here when compared with this 10 kilohertz constant signal will generate an error voltage and that error voltage you all can understand will be exactly looking like this message signal itself why because you can see here the frequency this might be somewhat same as F0 but as you move here it is increasing the F in uh, the FM frequency is increasing than F0 so here the error voltage will also start increasing that's what you see here the increased voltage of the error and here when you come then the frequency at this region is less than F0 so obviously the phase detector will detect an error voltage which is less which actually comes out like this so when you completely try to take the error voltage that drives this VCO to follow the FM you will see that the error voltage is exactly equal to the message signal so in an PLL if you are trying to take the output from this point you will get the FM demodulated signal or what we call as the message signal and that's how we demodulate a FM signal so you give an FM here the VCO tries to track it but in the process of tracking the error voltage that is coming here that itself will be the message signal so we take our output from here let's look it in the pin diagram we know that the PLL is done using 565 this design is actually the design of the PLL that we have already seen and 2 is the input for the phase detector the other input the pin number 3 is grounded the VCO output the VCO output is basically pin number 4 and the phase detector to compare it with VCO we connect this 4 pin to the fifth pin that is connected to the phase detector so that's why 4 and 5 are connected here and since 4 is the output we will directly you know the output at 4 will be the VCO output and that VCO sorry, and that compared signal that is coming from the phase detector that is coming via this passes to the amplifier and then comes out of pin number 7 which is here and this signal this this signal itself would have or should have you know gone back to the VCO it goes back to the VCO but we take it out at pin number 7 to get the VCO control voltage isn't it that VCO control voltage will come out here so that will give the FM demodulation signal so here is the output and procedure wise listen to this very carefully procedure wise what we do is we design this PLL we give the input signal first 
which is a 10 kilohertz signal so that it the input tracks exactly the PLL and this is the VC output which we have already designed for 10 kilohertz free running frequency so once the input we give as 10 kilohertz and which is equal to the VCO the PLL loop is locked once we have locked this we know that the locking will happen forever until we go out of the lock range so once the locking has occurred what we will give is we will give the FM modulation which is basically as you remember previously we will give a changed frequency signal isn't it that means 10 kilohertz plus minus some small change frequency will happen and that change will be tracked by the VCO which we will look at pin number 4 so once the input and the output at pin number 4 they are matching and here we have already given the FM signal all we have to do is we have to look at what is the signal coming out at pin number 7 and that will be the message signal which will be slightly having noise because of the uh, filter that we are using okay so this is the experimental procedure and we have already learned how to design the PLL the rules are same the PLL free running frequency is basically given by this we have to design it for 10 kilohertz and the lock range as we have designed it for the PLL we have to design that even the capture range we have to design the same value so R1 C1 will decide the free running frequency C2 will design the capture range which we have already found out okay if you remember the lock range we can find out by putting F0 is equal to uh, 10k here and you remember in the PLL what is the VCC value we can easily design the FL using that FL here and using the R2 value as 3.6k we can design the value of C2 so the design will be the, the, the values will be exactly what we have designed for the PLL okay so that's all for the FMD modulation using PLL thank you